People tend to ask me, how do you get the cinematic lighting in your posters? And my first answer to this is, well, I have a speed art for it. Okay, so I'll be explaining in this tutorial how to create cinematic lighting using Source Filmmaker and Photoshop. Now, I can already hear people saying, Ugh, ew, Photoshop is expensive and I need my organs to live, blah, blah, blah. But hey, did you know that Photoshop Elements is like $40? Just saying. Now, if you're more new to this SFM stuff, I recommend you watch my other tutorials. If not, then whatever. Lighting in a poster is incredibly important. It changes the entire atmosphere of the scene. When you want a dark scene, you can go into your camera settings and turn the tone map scale down until it's the amount you want. When you light things in SFM, you should always try to keep in mind how light behaves. So just don't put lights randomly. Think about where the light source is coming from. Then carefully light your model, and by doing so, try to create shadows with your lights. The more shadows typically means the higher quality. Rim lights are fairly simple to explain. It's just a light behind the model that casts a rim along the edges of the poster. Now sometimes you can make these really really bright and other times barely noticeable. It just depends on what you're going for. Now SFM only allows 8 lights at a time, however there's a trick around this. If you right click the light and disable shadows, you will be able to add it. SFM is only counting the shadowed lights rather than the lights themselves. This way you can have 30 lights on your posters. Volumetric lighting is essentially a light that affects the air. You can use it for things like lights, or even just to change the color of the air. If you wish to change how strong the volumetric is, slide the volumetric intensity slider to your desired amount. For the most part, I usually put the light behind the model so it doesn't distract the viewer's eye. But again, in many times in the art world, it depends on what you're going for. To add some depth to your poster, you can go into your camera settings and use the depth of field slider to put the purple box into the middle of your model. Then, you can use the aperture slider to select how much blur you want in your poster. You should notice that nothing is changing. That's because in order to see the difference, you need to switch from your motion editor to your clip editor. Then give it a second and it should show you what it would look like more or less when you render it. Once you're done, you have the option to increase the quality of the depth of field by going into your render settings. If your computer can't handle it, I suggest you go with a lower value. Then you can take it further if you want and go into the element viewer on your camera and bumping up the quality here as well. Now we jump to the Photoshop part of the video. It's important when you're making posters like this to spend time on the small details. Although you might not always see it, I like to think of it the more small details, the higher the quality of a poster. In this specific poster, I needed the t-shirt to kind of rip out a little bit, so I drew it. I just basically use the brush tool and the smudge tool. Then I made a red light and blurred it for the lights, and then put a color dodge onto the layer. One of the most important things to learn when you're making any type of art piece is to take your time. After you've finished all the manual edits, it's time for the color correction. Go to Image, Adjustments, and by using the exposure and levels, create the general look for the poster.
For most cinematic posters, I tend to have it not as saturated. So with the shortcut Control U, I can bring it down a bit. Then I make a last minute touch ups with drawn on effects, just to add a little bit more attention to detail. Then I added rain. To add the rain it's fairly simple, but to give it more of a touch, I started drawing on rain splashes. I hope you learned something from watching this video. If you want to show me the art that you make, you can tweet it at my Twitter. If you guys want to suggest tutorials and stuff, comment it. Thanks for watching.